Everything from this point on is gonna set up for our diagonal brace wire. This wire is gonna run from the top of our brace pin that we left sticking out down to the base of our end post or what would be your corner post. And we're gonna hold that wire in place down there with the staple. That's what we're gonna show you next. Our lower holding staple is gonna be driven about two inches off the ground in a horizontal orientation and our wire will run underneath it. Sometimes it's easiest to use a staple starter to get the staple going because it is so close to the ground and it'll save your fingers. You'll wanna drive this staple at an upward diagonal angle or tap the end of the staple downward towards the ground to ensure that the wire can't slip off of it. Next, you'll insert a floating staple into the opening of the previous staple. This will act as a friction reducer. As your wire tensions around, it'll slide freely on the staple instead of digging into the wood of the post. Our H brace is ready for wire. We're gonna show you how to use a spinning jenny to pay out wire in a figure eight pattern using our brace pin and our lower holding staple. Some of the features that you'll notice on this spinning jenny are the wire holding arms. There are multiple hole options for where to place these arms to accommodate the size coil that you're using. Another feature you'll notice is this wing nut, which is used to clamp down on the inside tail of your coil. There's also a hole on the outside rim where you can insert your payout tail if you need a stopping point in your project. There's also a brake on this spinning jenny that will control the tension or resistance as you pay out the wire. To load your spinning jenny, install the wire holding arms in the correct hole and turn them towards the inside. Next, we'll load the wire on top of the arms and then flip the arms outside. Once you spin your arms to the outside, you can proceed to cut the banding on your coil. Identify the two tails of your coil. The inner tail is intended to be fastened underneath this wing nut to hold it in place. The payout end can be placed into the wire end storage on the outside of the rim. Okay, Ashley's gonna go ahead and pull it to me. We're gonna go through the middle of our brace, up over our brace pin, and she's gonna bring it uh, back through our brace. I'll keep pulling slack for her. Now she's gonna go below our holding staple that we installed. And back through our middle. So that's kind of our figure eight to start with. Now we're gonna do this again. Coming around our brace pin. Back through the middle. and then she's gonna stick that tail end in the ground just to hold for now. And you can see we've got a nice intersection here from our double figure eight going in and out each lap. All right, we're gonna pull our last tail around. And we're gonna make sure we have enough overlap to get us past the midway point of the H brace. And notice we have this overlapping with the other end that's stuck in the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and Ashley's gonna hold the slack so that it doesn't get away from us, and then we'll reattach it to the spinning jenny. With our rough figure eight established, we're ready to install our strainer. To do so, we'll use a series of bends as well as some crimp sleeves, either two short sleeves together or a single long sleeve. To compress these, we're gonna be using a crimp tool. We're also gonna install our strainer online, and once it's in position, we'll use a tensioner handle to bring our wire up to tension. We're gonna start by pulling this tail end out of the ground. We're gonna cut our bend from the coil, so we have a nice straight piece of wire to start with. We're gonna use a single long sleeve and slide it on before anything else, before any bends, before any strainers, and just get it up out of the way. Next, we can kind of pick our starting point for our strainer. It's gonna pull a little bit and go closer to the middle, so we'll start up here. We can slide this on. Bring it up around. We're gonna pick our starting point for the strainer, which would probably be in that ballpark, and we'll go ahead and bend this wire around. I'll go ahead and use a pair of pliers to kind of tighten that loop up.
and you can cut away the excess so it's not in your way. Next, we'll give it a little bit of a bend to accommodate our crimp sleeve. Usually a 45 degree bend will work nicely. Slide the crimp sleeve past your tail end and push the wires together. And then slide the crimp over both ends. You can use your pliers to squeeze this a little bit and get that crimp sleeve closer to your strainer. Next, we'll clean up our tail. We're gonna cut a little bit away from here just to give a better look. And now we can compress our crimp. We're gonna put three compressions in a row, starting closest to our strainer and working our way out. Next, we're gonna take our other tail end out of the ground, up over our wires, and slide it through the hole in the cog of the strainer, and we'll pull that slack out. And then just pull it over the top of the strainer and give it a little bit of a squeeze. That'll lock it in place for now. Next, you'll pick out the position where you want your strainer to end, probably in this area right here, and then bend it over. And then we're gonna give a slight bend. We're gonna pinch these wires together and slide our crimp sleeve over both. And you can apply pressure with some pliers to get that crimp sleeve closer. Then we'll use our crimp tool to put three compressions on this crimp sleeve, starting closer to the strainer and working our way to the outside. And then we'll cut some of our excess tail off as well. Next, we're gonna take our other wire tail out of the ground and slide it through this hole in the strainer. And we'll pull that slack up through and fold it over the top of the strainer. This will hold the tension in place for us while we check our wires. Before you add any tension, you wanna check your brace pin and your lower staple to make sure that these lines are running parallel, one on top of each other, not crossed over. This would create a pinch point and it would hinder your tensioning, so make sure that these are running parallel. Now we're gonna go ahead and cut away some of this tail. You'll wanna leave yourself about six inches. We have a shorter tail at our strainer. And now we're gonna pull this slack the rest of the way through the strainer until there's about a quarter inch or a half inch sticking up out of our hole. Next, you'll hold pressure on the wire in the cog to ensure that tail doesn't slip while you use your strainer handle to put the first wrap on the cog. Before we add any more tension, we're gonna go ahead and check our parallels again. Make sure that we're not crisscrossed and we're seated nicely on our brace pin and our staple. We're nice and parallel, so we're gonna go ahead and keep straining here. As you continue tensioning, you can pull and tug on your wires to get any pinch points out, pull any slack around the corners, and then continue the tension. Our H-brace is up to tension. 
you'll notice our strainer ended up just off center, which gets us away from this busy intersection and gives you room to work your strainer handle. This H brace is done. From there, you can move on to your other corners and braces and then string your wire.